The 2025 Ducati Panigale V4 represents the most cutting-edge mass-produced superbike of the modern sport bike era. Yet, as I swing a leg over this new machine, I can't help but reflect on its predecessors. The last Panigale V4 I rode was the 2023 V4 SP2 during Cycle World's Superbike Shootout. It was breathtakingly fast and boasted a clear electronic advantage, but it had the temper of an unruly bull, making every lap a hard-earned accomplishment. Its raw power and aggression delivered fast lap times, but you had to fight for them. Ducati has long recognized that the Panigale's precision could be a double-edged sword. After the launch of the stiff and unforgiving 2018 Panigale V4, engineers began to smooth out its rough edges with updates in 2020 and 2022. Those changes signaled Ducati's shift toward the idea that less can sometimes be more. Now, with the 2025 model, the brand fully embraces the belief that the fastest bikes are those that are easiest to ride. And the 2025 Panigale V4S is incredibly fast. How do we get here? Ducati's approach is rooted in racing. While a friendlier bike offers advantages on the street and for casual riders, a less physically demanding motorcycle allows top riders to push it to its limits for longer. Performance is vital, but having enough mental capacity and stamina left to focus on Rasekraft is equally important. During a ride event for the Panigale V4S, we engaged in open conversations with Ducati's team and discovered the strategic reasons behind the bike's technical evolution, particularly the introduction of the new double-sided swing arm. Why now? And why here? This decision is intriguing, especially considering Ducati's return to a single-sided swing arm on its 2007 1098 Superbikes after the conventional swing arm, used on the 999, was largely rejected. The straightforward explanation, according to those involved in the project, is that Ducati Course aims to apply insights from MotoGP chassis development to the World Superbike Series. After all, what's the point of gaining knowledge in MotoGP if it can't be used in production-based racing? This is especially relevant since both MotoGP and World Superbike increasingly demand more from the chassis due to the higher loads placed on tires and suspension at extreme lean angles. With World Superbike's homologation rules, the only way to bridge the gap between MotoGP prototypes and production-based racing was by equipping the Panigale with a double-sided swing arm. Racing has always driven Ducati's choices, and this is evident with nearly every aspect of the 2025 Panigale V4. Ducati prioritizes performance first, while sentimentality and style follow further down the list. Panigale V4 S Chassis the decision to break from tradition wasn't made lightly. Ducati's management tasked Ducati Course with designing both a double-sided swing arm using mass production methods, a cast design with no specialized machining, and a single-sided swing arm with identical stiffness goals. Testing began in early 2021, with evaluations taking place across three tracks, Vallelunga, Cremona, and Mugello, using previous generation Panigales for comparison. Carlo Ricci Maccarini, the Panigale V4 development team leader, explained the process. In Ducati's history, we've never undertaken such an extensive development activity. The answer didn't come immediately. We found both positives and negatives in each design. But when considering overall rider feedback and lap time improvements, the double-sided swing arm came out on top. The result is a swing arm that offers the same longitudinal rigidity for stability during braking and acceleration, but with 37% less lateral rigidity, improving feedback, grip, and bump absorption at deeper lean angles where the suspension is less effective, since suspension works best in a vertical plane. Ducati also claims a weight reduction of 5.9 pounds in the rear end assembly, which includes a suspension, swing arm, and forge wheels found on the high-spec V4S, making direct comparisons with a single-sided setup challenging. Further, the V4S is different from the base model V4 in that it uses an Olean's NPX30 fork, Olean's TTX36 shock, and Olean's steering damper, compared to a Showa Big Piston Fork BPF, SAC shock, and SAC steering damper. You also get the aforementioned forged aluminum wheels versus cast aluminum hoops, and a lithium battery versus lead acid. 
Electronic suspension on the V4S is controlled by a third-generation Smart EC 3.0 system that can be run in customizable fixed or active modes. The suspension uses Olean's newer spool valve design versus needle valve that provides increased sensitivity and responsiveness at the low and high ends of the adjustment range and very much deserves its own story. Paging Mr. Cameron, Mr. Kevin Cameron. Perhaps more important is that the philosophies driving Ducati's new swing arm were carried over to the new front frame, which is 40% less lateral stiffness and is 1.6 pounds lighter. More upgrades come in the form of Brembo's new Hyper brake calipers which are lighter weight thanks to a more efficient material distribution, have better heat dissipation, and are said to have improved pad life. Viewed independently, these are all really nice parts, but bring them together as Ducati has done with the Panigale V4S, and you have something quite special, as evidenced by our day at Vallelonga Circuit, an incredibly unique track that flip-flops between an eye-watering series of fast corners and hairpins that are tight to an extreme. Overall handling is not profoundly different from before. The 2025 E4S steers easily into a corner, sure, but not quicker or with significantly less effort than previous generation. V4S, stability, and feel at the contact patch is, however, increased and there's a greater sense of wholeness to the bike. There's very little chassis pitch, nor does the bike bind up as you load the chassis at lean, or snap as you accelerate off the corner. And while it may have taken some effort to make last year's Panigale protest in that way, small mistakes and unreasonable inputs would remind you of that bike's personality at the edge. In racing, these small gains in composure and sure-footedness make a difference. And for us mere mortals, they increase the operating window, enabling us to have more fun at the same, if not faster, pace. Credit also goes to the combination of excellent suspension and Brembo brakes, the latter offering so much performance that we have zero issues calling this the best braking package to come standard on a mass production sport bike. Not only is there an abundance of feel at the lever, but there's so much stopping power that it's hard to wrap your head around the true braking potential. Need to make up time? Simply trust the stability of the bike, run it in deeper, and grab more lever than your mind wants you to believe is possible. The V for might say, hey, that was kind of fun, without so much as breaking a sweat. Panigale V4S Electronics Much of the Panigale's performance and control is owed to the electronics package, which for 2025 includes increasingly advanced systems like the Race ECBS combined braking system developed by Bosch and Ducati's own Ducati Vehicle Observer, DVO, algorithm, which manages Ducati Traction Control, DDC. Ducati Wheelie Control, DWC, and Ducati Power Launch, DPL. In addition to the DVO-powered systems, you have normal Ducati Slide Control, DSC, Ducati Quick Shift, DQS, and Engine Brake. 